Welcome back to Anatomy with Dr. P. In this video, we're going to be looking at the anatomy of the human ear. We're going to start with the outer ear region, which is this region out here. We can see our first structure is this outer part that we can see on the outside of the head. This region is called the auricle. Auris is a Latin word that means ear. Now our auricle acts like a funnel. It's going to collect the sound waves and funnel them into this passageway here. This passageway is known as the external acoustic meatus, sometimes called the external auditory meatus, the external acoustic canal, or the external auditory canal. As sound waves travel down this external acoustic meatus, they eventually reach this membrane here. This membrane is known as the tympanic membrane. Tympanum is a Latin word that means drum, which is where we get the common everyday term eardrum. But remember, we're going to use proper anatomical terms here, so we're going to use tympanic membrane. Now, I'm going to pull our tympanic membrane out so that we can see our three auditory ossicles. The first auditory ossicle is going to be this one right here. You can see how it's attached to our tympanic membrane, and it's vaguely hammer-shaped. So we refer to this one as the malleus. Malleus is a Latin word that means hammer. Our second auditory ossicle, when we look at it, we can see it kind of has this big horn shape to it. This one is known as the incus, the anvil because the front part of a anvil has a big horn where that's where you bend the metal to make things like horseshoes. Our third auditory oscill, if we put our tympanic membrane back, we can see is in the very back here, right here. This one is known as the stapes. Stapes is the Latin word that means stirrup. And a stirrup is somewhere where you put your foot in when you're sitting on a saddle. So it's kind of like that little area where your foot goes. Now, in addition to those three, we can also see that we have this passageway here that leads from our middle ear down to the throat. This passageway is known as the auditory tube or eustachian tube. And it plays an important role in equalizing pressure between the middle ear cavity and the outer ear. And the reason we want this is if we imagine, say, going up a mountain, where we have an elevation change, the pressure on the outside of the body will start to decrease. But the pressure in the middle ear cavity will stay the same. So if we didn't have a way to correct this problem, what would end up happening, the higher pressure in the middle ear would eventually push out and out and out and out until this tympanic membrane might burst. At that point, you would be deaf. So thanks to our auditory tube, when we start going up that side of the mountain and pressure outside the body starts to drop, eventually this tube will open up and allow the pressure in the middle ear to equalize with the pressure in the throat. That's what causes that popping when you go up in elevation. Now, this part of the model here shows our inner ear cavity. Now, when we look at the inner ear, we can see here's our stapes. That's attaching to the oval window, which is this little area here. And the oval window sits on this portion, which we refer to as the vestibule. Vestibulum in Latin means entrance. So this is the entrance to our inner ear. Attached to our vestibule, we have these three separate semicircular canals. Because we can see they are semicircular in shape. And notice how each of them runs in a slightly different direction. That's to allow you to track head motion in three directions. This one here allows you to track your head as you nod yes. This one here allows you to track your head as you say no. And this one here allows you to tilt your head side to side. Now if we go back to this view, we can see also attached to our vestibule is this kind of snail-shaped structure. This is known as the cochlea. The cochlea comes from the Latin word which means snail shell. This is going to be where we find our organs of hearing. Now if we look at the back of the inner ear, we can see that we have this very large nerve here. This nerve is attaching to both my vestibule and my cochlea, which is where we derive its name, the vestibulo 
cochlear nerve or cranial nerve 8. Now if I flip my model up like this, so we're looking down from a superior view or a top view, I can see how my inner ear is surrounded entirely with bone, and this passageway where my cranial nerve 8 or vestibulocochlear nerve is exiting, that's known as the internal acoustic meatus or internal auditory meatus or internal acoustic canal or uh, internal auditory canal. It has a lot of different names. So that canal allows that vestibulocochlear nerve to reach my inner ear compartment.